Hey everyone, today we're going to start the process for 3D modeling car and vehicle interiors. This is part of a series where I'll be covering interior car modeling from beginning to end. Today's video focuses specifically on the blockout workflow which will set us up for the rest of the series. This tutorial series is targeted for beginner to advanced skill level in 3D modeling. My 2022.3 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get right into it. Alright, so here we are in Maya, and you can see that we have a nice block out of a vehicle interior. This is based off of the Datsun 240Z, based on Sun Kang's Resto Mod. I had modeled the full exterior, so if you're interested in that tutorial and that series, you can make sure to check that out right here on my YouTube channel. And I have the entire series for free, and it takes you through the multi-part process of how to model the exterior. And now that we have the exterior, you know, the highly requested next part is going to be, you know, how do we model the interior? So again, I'm going to take you through the process of just kind of blocking out this interior. You can see I have just a quick animation that shows these doors opening and closing. It shows that, you know, we have all of the open parts is what I like to call it, set up and blocked out. And I'll make sure to cover how to just quickly set up some simple control objects that'll help open and close these doors. And it's going to be helpful to have this set up so we can just check and review that we have everything kind of blocked in for the rest of the series. So as usual, the first thing that you're going to want to do is build up a nice detailed mood board, right? So here's our mood board, which is the mood board that we use to build the exterior of the Datsun 240Z. And you can see I have a couple different variations, so I might come back and create different mods of what we currently have. But the focus here is going to be on interior modeling. You can see I have some nice detailed shots that really get nice up and close. And you know you can find a lot of these automotive websites that'll create some nice high resolution images that you can use for reference. Now, I won't be using any blueprints or anything since you know this is a custom vehicle and a custom resto mod. So there isn't really any blueprints that's gonna be uh, helpful for modeling, which is all the more reason why you want as much reference as possible. Now, the other thing that I highly recommend is really spend some time understanding what you are creating. In this case, we're creating a 3D vehicle, right? Based off of, you know, a vintage car that's being restored, right? So it helps if you go through and spend some time to figure out how these vehicles and how these models are made. This applies to anything that you are creating. It applies to vehicles, it applies to, you know, products, anything that you can use that you can hold in your hand. And even if it doesn't exist in real life, it's going to be off of some facet of reality. So you really, really want to make sure to spend that time understanding how these things are made, right? And you can take a look. There's a lot of YouTube videos on, you know, how to create, you know, how vehicles are made, the assembly line process, and, you know, and all the different layers, right? The important thing is understanding all these different layers. So we have the exterior sheet metal, we have the safety cage, we have the chassis, and then, you know, it, you start to add the powertrain. And from there, you know, you start to add the interior components and just kind of assemble everything. All right. So make sure to spend some time and do your research. And like, like I said, too, is this is a custom mod, right? So I had to spend quite a bit of time, you know, finding old reference. And this is going to help us understand, you know, the dimensions of these parts. And, you know, I'm looking through trying to find the sizes of speedometers, tachometers, steering wheels. And a lot of times, you know, you won't get it uh, exactly. But hey, I found some really old forums on some automotive and car hobbyist forums that like gave me specific dimensions um, from discussions between each other. So that is very, very helpful. And I don't want to underestimate the value of spending that time in researching because I'm sure everybody wants to just jump in and start modeling seats and steering wheels and all the cool stuff. But really, we got to spend that time at the beginning making sure that everything looks correct. So I'm going to close the doors here and I'm going to switch over to modeling standard. 
All right. So now that we have our reference and we spent the time doing our researching and, you know, understanding how car is made, we can now get into the block out process. If I enable wireframe on shaded here, you can see that we have, you know, the higher detailed versions of the vehicle. And I subdivided this so I can add in these details here for the door handles and some other details around here, which is all part of the exterior modeling series. In this case, I don't want to use this higher subdivided version. Instead, I want to use this base version. Now, if you're following along on my tutorials, you know that I always take my models and duplicate them before I do any destructive part of the process, which could be subdividing your mesh. In this case, I have the low poly version of this, which is the high poly version, or I would say subdivided ones to add in details. Okay, so I have this lower poly version and from here, I'm going to start building up the inside and I would say kind of that safety cage part of the vehicle. All right, so we're going to start with this and if you're working, you know, you can always just duplicate it so you have a backup of that and we're going to start with this piece here. Now, if you know how I do my panels, you know that they already have this thickness here, right? So I'm just toggling x-ray mode and you can kind of see, but there is no thickness on the inside. So what I'm going to do is to create the inside now is I'm going to delete all of this, uh, this thickness here. So I'm going to just shift click, double click. There you go. So shift click, left click, and then double click. You can select the faces and I'm just going to simply hit delete and it's going to delete these faces. And I want to do that everywhere around the model. So I'll just time lapse that real quick. Okay. And there we go. So I've deleted all of the kind of that, uh, that fake thickness that we had. And what I can do is actually just kind of get rid of whatever I don't need. And by the way, I am using world Z symmetry. So just use whatever accesses your line of symmetry and you can just delete what you don't need. Right? So I'm going to delete this kind of front hood piece here and we have the underside of the body and that's fine. I'll leave those kind of uh, as is here. So from here, now we can take this part and we can give this thickness, right? So if you just hold shift, right click and do an extrude, you can see now I can just push this in on the normal and there you go. Now I'm going to move this just maybe negative one here. I don't want to push it too far and you can see that it's black because the normals are reversed because I'm pushing this in a negative local translate value. So I'll hold right click, go back to object mode. And if you want to quickly reverse this, you can go up here to mesh display and then reverse, or you'll see me more frequently hold space on the space bar and you can find any menu within Maya. So if you know that you go up here a lot, at the top menu, just make sure to use mesh display uh, here, but just by holding space bar and I'll do mesh display and reverse faces. And there we go. We have this nice thickness here. All right. So this is going to give us a, the thickness that we need on the inside, which is going to give us a great start. And this is going to allow us to use that existing topology, right? Wherever you can in 3d modeling, you always want to reuse any form that you possibly can. So now what I can do is I'll run a simple mesh separate. So I'll hold shift, right click and run separate here. Just scroll down. There we go. Delete history. And then now I'm going to recombine the doors. So I have those with symmetry and delete history on that. And we're good to go. Now what I can do is take these doors. So I'll hold control one or press control one to isolate. And what I can do is select these, right? And so this is where our reference is going to come in handy. And we want to get a good sense of, you know, how thick these doors need to be. And you can see that they're going to be this thickness here. Uh, I don't have any dimensions. I'm not using, you know, I'm not going to be typing any centimeters or anything, but this gives us a good eye. You know, you're going to have to build that good eye for measure. Right. And we can see some other parts here. Let's see if I can find another good shot of the door. 
no, this is probably the best shot that we're going to have. And hey, that's just part of the game, right? Sometimes you don't have reference for everything. So we're going to have to just use assumptions on how to fill in these gaps, right? So we're going to use this kind of as our main guideline. And I can take this now and I can start selecting these faces, right? And the good thing is I can just kind of uh, control click since I have these faces already selected. And I can jump over to my modeling toolkit. So I have this. And we can just kind of deselect. Now, if you want to deselect large faces, groups of faces, I recommend using selection constraint angle. And then you can use, you know, like a small degree angle. And it can use like 10 degrees uh, here. All right? And you can start deselecting larger groups of faces that will work out for what we're trying to do, right? So I'm just deselecting essentially the front side of this door or the outside because I don't need that, right? We already have that modeled. So we're going to deselect everything. And now we got the inside of the door. So I can turn off the selection constraint here. And then now I'm going to use my scale tool. And this is going to give us our nice thickness. And I can just start scaling this in and then moving it out in the Y. And there you go. Look at that shape here. So this shape here is very similar to what we already have here. It's using the exterior of the body like so. So this is perfect, right? And we're just moving it in. It's not perfect right now, but it's good enough for this blockout phase because, you know, we can see some other shots here is we're trying to model this door panel piece and we can roughly see kind of the thickness on this top piece, this top carbon fiber piece, right? So we're looking here again, just kind of blocking this out and you can even, you know, just kind of rotate it because it's pretty uniform going down here. So again, don't worry about it. We're just roughing in and blocking in these main forms and these shapes. So there we go. We have our door. I'm actually going to hide the uh, current interior uh, there and now that we've got that we can start working on the uh, rest of the inside of the vehicle all right so I'm going to grab the door and then now I'll grab the inside of the vehicle that we extruded and then we can start to work with this and actually start deleting faces that we don't need so let me just kind of toggle isolate here and there we know we don't need you know really so this is called B pillar right here, or excuse me, A pillar, this is B pillar, and this is would be if there was another pillar here, uh, C pillar. So we don't need anything really A pillar forward, maybe just like these sets of faces. So what I'm going to do is start deleting these faces. So now I can just pull off and extract and delete these faces. Uh, I'm not really using extract, I'm just using uh, delete, straight up delete. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is I want to start separating the uh, exterior from the interior. Okay. Now in order to do that, if I just select these faces here, like, so I want to make sure to do that everywhere that I have thickness. So we have x-ray here. We can start to, you know, take a look here and we have it on the inside here and that should be, it, it looks like we are, we have these bottom pieces here as well. Okay. So we have all of this like so and what i can do is now well we have this uh, under well or this wheel well and the underbody what i'm going to do is i should have separated that so let me separate that from this vehicle so i'm going to select these faces and do a quick extract okay i have these faces selected now I'm going to hold shift, right click, and just do an extract. All right. Now we can delete history on that. Now I can go back and grab the uh, original body here, like so. And from here, I can now go back to selecting those faces that are along the inside. So basically the, th the piece that we use for thickness. And we have this like so. And then... We're just going to find all those pieces that we have that were used to create the thickness. All right. Now from here, and I would say I'm probably going to delete this inside piece because if you look at the pure ref here, we, it's a, a hatch and we're going to have kind of this uh, spare tire holder here. So we don't need to have the rear 
uh, of the vehicle here. We don't need to have the inside of that. So what I can do is just straight up kind of delete these pieces here like so. And let's see, that'll allow us to separate this, delete that, and just doing a little bit more cleanup here. So this is all part of the process. You know, it's never kind of, you know, when you have complex meshes like this, never a, a one and done type thing. There's always a little bit of cleanup, so don't worry about that. All right, now let's go and select these faces again. And select, select, just holding Control Shift and double clicking. All right, and we should have this. Now, just to make sure, if I delete these faces, select the outside, it should be a clean selection on the outside, which means I have the all of the kind of the border faces, but I don't want to delete. I just did that just to make sure I had all the faces selected. Then what I can do is hold Control, right click. I can go to Two Edges and then Two Edge Perimeter. And look at that. It gives us these edge perimeters here. Now I can deselect the inside since I want that for the thickness. So we're going to go through and deselect all of the faces here like so. And we have the one around the hood and we have this one here as well. Okay. So actually we want to, we want to delete that one or detach that one. So I'll find that and this one here and this one here. So wherever you want, you have these faces that are coming to the outside, you want to leave those because this is where we're detaching from. All right. So we have something like this. Okay, great. So now that we have that, you can just do now a detach. So if you hold shift, right click and go to detach components, what that'll do is allow you to select these. Wow, I did that on the first try. Sometimes it doesn't work as clean as that. I have to, I missed some edges, but hey, I got them all. So we have all of these faces here, select it and watch, delete. And there you go. Now you'll see if I select those inside faces and these outside faces, look at that, right? I have this clean inside now, this clean shell that I can use to do whatever I want with the exterior, which is going to give us this here. Now remember, this is not a perfect shell, right? Because there's more that goes into it. As you can see here, you know, with these different versions uh, of the interior, what we're doing is we're getting the backsides. And we're doing this again to just create a nice block out. So what I can do now is start to bring in these faces here. So for this back part, for the rear of the vehicle, I can start to bring that in, okay? So what I mean by that is if I select these faces here, plus this door panel, we can kind of start to see where I'm gonna need that, right? Because again, I'm creating this part of the door. This is the probably one of the most important parts because that's going to be where we open our door and you're going to see all of that. So I need to grab these faces here. So I'll go ahead and select these faces like so. Okay, so here are the faces that I've grabbed and I want to emphasize something here is that this does not need to be perfect. This does not need to be clean. Again, this is all just block out and creating the initial form because we are going to recreate a lot of this detail. So I just need this to be a representation of what the interior is going to look like. So with that being said, I'm just gonna grab these faces. And again, if I just kind of scale these and move these in like so, you can start to see we want this roughly lined up to the where the door is. And then you can start to see now, it starts to kind of bow back, so that will be fine. And we can move these around here. And if you want, you can just hit B and kind of use this soft selection, right? So I'm you know, gonna soft select, and then I will deselect the, the front faces so I can start to bring this kind of back out uh, like, like so. 
Okay, so we're going to have something along the lines of this. And this is just going to be, again, just a nice, like, quick and dirty block out, right? It's not meant to look perfect. It's not meant to look very clean. And this will work. And actually, I'm going to probably delete the those faces there, right? Because, again, I don't care about these. So I'll hit B, deselect these. And then I'm just going to clean up these faces that are at the edge that I just don't need. Plus, there's some uh, interior detail that I don't quite need. Uh, either. So I can just delete them, right? We don't need this. I'm just creating that initial form uh, on the inside. I'm also going to select all of these edges and remove them because I just, again, I don't really need these details here. So if I select those edges, control backspace, and this should be fine like so. All right. So a little bit of cleanup and I can move on to the next part. So we have these, just control backspace space to delete vertex and edges, okay? So you have something like this, and then now we have, we're starting to get the interior uh, of this, and you can start to see that if I move these doors, you know, we need to have kind of what's called the door sill. And to have this door sill, I can just select these edges here, or these vertices, and I can start to push these out a little bit to get more of that door sill here that's going to be uh, on the interior. Okay, so this will work great. And then I can select these or deselect kind of these bottom ones and just select this row. And we're just using kind of the existing shapes here. Then now that I have this, guess what this is going to be? This is going to be our floor. So I can shift click. Right, if I hold shift with the move tool and then just move these right in the middle and I can just kind of scale these edges or these vertices and they are perfectly planar. And holding V, I'm just gonna keep moving that slowly until they snap right there on the line of symmetry. And there we go. Okay, so you can start to see the form that we're getting here and you can start to see how we're using, utilizing existing geometry. So again, if I move this out of the way, you can start to see, boom, we start to have the interior uh, piece here. Then if we look at the rear area, we can see this rear hatch. So we have to make sense of kind of what's going on here. We have the spare tire over here that's off symmetry. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, about it being off symmetry. I'll just make it in the center and I can move it later. And then these, this is where the suspension system is mounted, right? So you have the chassis of the vehicle, which is essentially all this white here, which is the white paint. And then that's being mounted here with this suspension, right? And then the wheel is right here. So that's roughly what we have over here, right? So what I can do is we already have this kind of, kind of roughed in here with this, this shell. So I can take this piece here that I already have modeled and just duplicate it because I use these for, you know, the inside uh, of the wheel well here, right? So now that I have that, you can go back and see we have the base here and we have the wheel well on the inside. And the other shape that we see is kind of the cylindrical part of the suspension. So for that, I'm just gonna create a cylinder and we're creating rough, rough block outs, right? So I'm gonna select that cylinder plus these, these faces here or these poly surfaces, control one to isolate. And we're just gonna keep moving along. So I'm gonna move this here and I'll set this to be, you know, just 16 sides. It doesn't really matter increase the radius quite a bit, increase the height quite a bit, and we're roughly gonna put this in position. And I know this position is relative to where the wheels are, all right? So if I take a look, we can see that it's pretty close to centered. I mean, I even have some nice shots here. This is it here, right, of another Datsun, where you can kind of see we have the suspension system and this looks like it's uh, close to the rear. And so we have the rear suspension mount and the shocks and everything being mounted right up here, right? And that's about center. This is the, the caliper, the rotors. This is all centered 
to the vehicle, right? So if I know that I want this roughly centered essentially to this tire here, I can just use a quick align tool here. If you need this align tool, you just go to modify align tool uh, and then find that there. And boom, we can just, mo you know, have that nice and centered there. And I'll go back with these faces selected and we get something like this where we have these faces and this cylinder piece. So we'll go back to that nice shot here. It's maybe at an angle, but I'm not too worried about that. We just kind of want the cylindrical shape and then we'll just extrude some faces out. So I'll grab these faces like so. And again, I'll just use shift extrude and maybe I'll grab one less. I think I grabbed an extra face there. There we go. And just scale that in. So it's something like this. And we'll just do that till it, it collides. There we go. So we get something like this, all right? So we're on the right track. The next thing that I want to do is create a simple plane because now I wanna just create this part of our reference, which is gonna be this spare tire holder. It's a pretty large surface here and you can see it's about you know halfway, a little above halfway where the tires would be. So I'm gonna use that here. So now let's create that plane. So I've created that plane. I'll select these faces, control one to isolate, grab that plane, put it up here, put it in position. I'm gonna actually just give it two by two and I'll scale it up. So we get something like this. All right, just roughly put it in position until we get something that looks like our reference here. So what I can do actually is I'm going to scale this down and what's nice about pure ref is if I hold right click, I should be able to just make sure that this mode is always on top. Okay, always on top, control shift A. So that means I can work here and look at this. And I normally have it on my second monitor, but this will work uh, just fine. Okay, and from here I can add in. So I'm gonna go to edge mode. I'm gonna hold shift right click. Well, shift right click with uh, an edge selected and I want to just start cutting in some of these de details and you can see that there's these kind of these uh, holes or these ports here those are going to be roughly past uh, the suspension area and then we're going to have this part I'm going to add an edge here and it's probably going to give us a little bit of leeway there and I'll probably delete this and put re-add one. If I hold control middle mouse, I can add one right in the dead center. This gives me what I need. And I'll select these faces here. Well, actually, before I do that, you have to give this thickness. So I'm just going to select the edge border like so, hold shift and move down. Now I can select the faces again, hold shift, right click, and go to extrude face, and we'll do an offset again. And from here, I'm going to use what's called circularize components. And it gives me this nice circular version of the spare tire or the circle extrusion. And then I can just bring down this radial offset. I can hit shift right click and extrude face. I can bring that down like so. So from here, what I can do is I know that I can grab one of these wheels here. I actually have this already on the interior and the position. So if I go in here and just grab this wheel, just so we're kind of following along together, I'll hit Control D to duplicate and Shift P to unparent and hide that interior and there we go. So I have this already in position and you can see, wow, that worked out pretty well and I didn't even try. So now we have this like so. And if I wanted to change the position, you know, that's what I had to do previously. I can select these vertices or these faces, move these, adjust them. I can scale non-uniformly. So I can just scale in the Y and uh, X like this and, you know, and position that where I want. And this should be fine for what I need. And if I wanted to, I can select these faces now, if I want to create these open vents here. Shift right click and I can do an extrude face, but if I ex offset these, you'll see that it offset together. So just disable, keep faces together and there you go. So this gives me something that I can work with and I can just kind of select these faces and scale them in. And I can just, for now, I'll just do a simple delete and this is good enough, right? 
I'm creating this simple shape area. I don't even worry about this strut here, this support. So I like kind of where I'm at. So I will move these vertices and just kind of move it so it clips but doesn't come on the outside of the vehicle. And we can move kind of these pieces uh, in here like so. If I wanted to move some stuff around, there we go. All right. So I can... By the way, this piece here was part of this. I don't need this anymore, so I can just straight up delete that. And there we go. So we have the strut piece, we have the wheel well, we have the spare tire compartment, and everything's looking pretty good, right? So you can start to see how I'm just blocking in, rough block out of these forms and these shapes, right? And I can work up, worry about what this exact shape is supposed to be like later. Right now, I'm just creating that rough block out. Again, if I move this door, you can start to see uh, what we have here. I can also just create like this simple block out here. So if I grab these faces or these edges, excuse me, I can bring this up and this will kind of be kind of that back mount piece. So now there we go. We can't see inside. So far, I'm liking the process that I have. It's working really well. Now I can move on to kind of the next pieces or the next parts, which is going to be kind of the cockpit of the vehicle, which is going to be the seats and the IP or what's called the instrument panel. Now that we're moving on to kind of the busier part of the vehicle, it's very important to have a good scale of reference. I didn't say anything about it earlier, but I'm sure you saw that I have this character model in here that I use to just kind of rough things in, right? So I have some views here within our reference that, you know, I can see some Kang or some drivers in here, and I have a good sense of where they should sit in rel relative to the seat and relative to the steering wheel and the IP. All of this is very, very important. I looked up online, I did find his height. His height says that he's right around six feet. So I kind of played with those values and, you know, used, set this character to be about, you know, 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 and I used that to kind of position him here. If you're interested in this rig, it's a completely free rig. And if I show the curves here, you know, it works really well for just quick, rough positioning, has IK, FK controls, and I can put him wherever I want, scale him into position and do whatever I need to do, right? So, you know, I made sure first that I had a six foot cube here so I use a six foot cube, scaled the character to be this height. And then from there, I positioned, put him in position for uh, the interior of the vehicle. All right. The next thing that I did was kind of create these rough seats here. So these are based off of cubes. So all I did was, so if I hide this interior, and hit control one to sh uh, show the isolate and i just created a cube like so and i used these drawings here and you you could see this i used this to create the these blueprints to create the seats for uh how to model anything so i can take these dimensions from here and just kind of roughly plug these in which i already did so i have these cubes already in position. So I'll just pull those in so you can see what I already have. So I can grab, should be able to, I believe it's this group here. Yeah, there we go. So that's all this is. This is literally a cube that's set to 500 uh, millimeters or centimeters as a scale. So I just created this cube here like so. And I set the height, width, and depth, scaled that up. And height, I kept it, you know, fairly decently thick. And depth here. So the depth would be about 500 and between 510 and 540. So if I set this, instead of 540, instead I'm going to do 54. Because this is millimeters and my default units are centimeters. And then I can use... Uh, kind of this width here 
to kind of get the rough seat shape or depth of that. And then I did the same thing for the seat back. I just put that in and then I literally just, you know, if I wanted to multi cut, roughly put these positions, these in position and just have something as a scale of reference, right? So that gave me the seat and then I just have this cube that I beveled here uh, for the headrest. So I just kind of, you know, saw the reference here and, you know, use this just as a quick representation, right? I looked at it from different angles and kind of see where the headrest is relative to the vehicle. So this can maybe come up a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point, right? Because I can position this and move this uh, as I see fit, which is nice thing to do, uh, a nice thing to do during the blockout phase. Okay, so that's what I did for the seats, which is going to give me a good scale of ref reference. Then I did the steering wheel. Now the steering wheel, this is kind of this nice vintage looking steering wheel that, you know, I can find uh, online and I just Googled and researched, you know, the 1972 Datsun 240Z steering wheel, steering wheel, excuse me, replacement. And eventually in some forums, I found the diameter of it, which is about 16, 17 uh, inches in diameter. So then I created Taurus like so and I'm gonna put this kind of in position and if I know it's you know 18 inches we'll start with that so 18 inches to centimeters you know that's gonna give me about 45 centimeters so now remember that's 45 centimeters in diameter so that's about you know we'll say 22.5 in centimeters radius so I will kind of put this like roughly in position. And I've seen some reports that said it's about 16, seven, you know, 16 to 18 inches. And don't forget the section radius is also adding on top of that, you know? So if the section radius is gonna be about one or 1 1.5, then I'd have to bring down this radius a bit too, right? So I used that to rough in the steering wheel position and then just used another cylinder on the inside to extrude out. That's all I did here for the steering wheel. So let me bring back my interior, right? And I have all that in position. And let me bring this and I'll hit Control D and Shift P to duplicate and unparent. And I can bring that and I'll hide this. And I was able to have the seat here in position and I put the steering wheel in position just using a simple cylinder nothing is combined by the way nothing is combined this is these are all this is a separate piece here that I extruded into each other very very simple very very primitive I am not going for anything final okay once I do that then I can go to this part of the process which is I can go back to that base model that I had and I think, let me see if I can't remember if I deleted it. Nope, here we are. So I have this part, okay? This is gonna be great because now I can take this piece here and create the top of the instrument panel, which is all of this shape here. So, you know, I can get some nice shots of how far that goes out. And, you know, you can see instrument panels from the top uh, shape. It's kind of like a curved T. So basically, if you combine this, so you have this that goes all the way horizontally, and then the center cons the center console that goes perpendicular. With that, I'm just gonna take this piece just like I did the other and use existing geometry to create the instrument panel. I will delete the underside and whatever thickness that I don't want. And from here, I can just select these edges and I will just hold shift and move these forward like so. Now if I hit control one to get out of isolate mode, there you go, we, we have the top of the IP and I can scale this now in the X axis to get something like this, okay? Now, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna use this to just block in that initial form that's gonna help again set us up for the rest of the series, so I'm gonna, delete these faces and I no lo longer need the front of the hood. So we have something like this 
and I can take this now, the front of the IP, and I can just continue to just shift move and get just some form blocked in, right? So if we look at kind of how this comes out at an angle, kind of angles forward a little bit and then back down. So we can create a similar shape like this, right? We're just creating a very, very rough instrument panel. And so from here, I like how this is looking. Now I can just shift move this and scale this. And I can just bridge these two. So now I have these completely solid, right? So if I were to just hide this, now you can see that I wouldn't look through it. Otherwise, if there was nothing here, I would be easily be able to, to see that, okay? So now that I have that, I can also see that I need to bring back this part here. And I have these parts of the doors that I got to bring in. So we can see what we have here. We have that extrusion piece. So I'm going to select these faces here. And I'm just going to extrude these. Or excuse me, not extrude them, but I'm going to scale these. So if, let's say, for example, I select these faces, like so, I don't want all of these, just something like this. And I don't care about the mess, I'm just going to scale it and move it over, something like there. There you go. So now if I hide the door, you have this that's going to now block that geometry, right? Very easy to add where we need it. So that's a very easy way to add form. Okay, so now that we have that, I can see that I need to, you know, this is what I mean by holes, right? This is the whole part of the process. We're not paying attention. Oh, shoot, I need to bring this over. So I don't have this giant gap when I open the door, right? So I will bring now this over and just bring this pretty close to something like this, right? And I'll just, you know, move edge slide so you can hold control shift middle mouse. We get something like this. And I can move this back a little bit further if I wanted. Or the bottom one. All right. This is good enough. And I can bring this down. So we have something like so. All right. Then, as you can see, this is an older style. Right? It's a vintage vehicle, so the speedometers, tachometers, and dials and everything are very simple shapes. So I looked online again, and I found you know these gauges and found the dimensions for them, and then I put these into position. So you can see that I've done that here, and I have these examples of all of these dials that are all the right, roughly the right size. So if you find, you can see this, this is, was a 20 centimeter. Uh, excuse me, this wasn't 20 centimeters. The speedometer and tachometer were, which are these two shapes here. So we have the speed and the RPM. And then we have the rest of the dials here. So I found out that these were 20 centimeters roughly in diameter. And I used that to create these shapes. And then I created these three dials here for the center portion. All right. So if I take these three, which are all very, very simple, Control D duplicate. I now can hide that part of the interior, unisolate, and you can see kind of now how things are coming into position. This is where having that rig of that character is going to be really helpful, right? If I bring this in here, and I think this one, there we go. And I'm just going to disable show NURBS curves. Right. So I have this like so. And you can see that the IP is protruding out a little too much. Right. And if I take a look at my reference, you can see that the IP should be just just right where this corner piece is. So that's how I kind of know, you know, everything relative to each other. So I can just bring these back. Right. This is the really, really great thing about just having everything 
kind of in this blackout phase. I can just simply move and make large scale changes and just make sure that everything is correct before you know moving or going too far. So this looks good here. I can angle this back because we get this kind of nice, a little bit of a taper. And then, you know, for the center stack piece, it's centered with these dials, right? Now you can start to see the importance of having everything relative to each other and having a good scale of reference, right? So if I grab these faces that roughly, you know, if we go to one that's looking kind of straight on like this, it's, yeah, I'd say this is pretty close here, but you know, we're not making, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll offset that a bit, delete these bottom faces and just move these edges down. Not worried about being neat and perfect. We're just kind of moving things as we need them. And I will just move these faces in and you can just hold shift and move. There you go. So you can start to see how we're building up all that form, all that detail. And, you know, if I wanted to just start to taper this out so we get a similar shape like so, this is all starting to work together. And then from here, right? So from this point, then I can create the rest of the floor and the center console, right? So I think I have this floor here. These are kind of fighting with that blackout. So for the floor here, I'm going to just bring that up just a hair, just so it doesn't clip. Just like this and make sure this doesn't clip with our blackout either. You can just move that up. And now we can start to see kind of what we got, right? And things are getting, you know, we got a lot of uh, pieces here and we have something like this, right? Now I have this cube here that, you know, I think I've, I created earlier and kind of forgot, but I'll scale this up. So I just have this new cube and this is gonna be the center console. Right? This is the center console that runs down the middle and we have our seat. So I'll delete this uh, seat that I didn't need. And we have this here. And what I'm gonna do now is take this seat, the driver's seat, control D duplicate and scale it negative one or oops, on the Z, not the X. And then now the center console is just gonna go in between the two seats that I know are pretty accurate and they sit really, really low to the ground, by the way. So we can see this roughly, you know, between 5'10", 5'10", 6 foot character is sitting pretty comfortably in here, right? And you can see how far that goes. So now I can use this to kind of create this center console piece. So I'll scale this out, put it in position and just very, very simple, very, very primitive and I will grab this like so, this face at the end of the console and hold shift and move and extrude. And you can start to see it starts to go up and taper. So that's all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring this up, or I should say, I should bring the IP down just a little bit like so, and I'll bring this part of the center console up. So this, Actually, I'm going to grab these three edges because I know for sure these need to come up, right? Because this is at the bottom of the seat. Here, we can see that this is at the bottom and it comes up a little bit. Like if I look, you can start to see, let me get a nice shot. I'm trying to find one, there we go, of the center console coming up about halfway of the seat. So we can, again, use that as our scale of reference and, you know, just use our reference as best as we can to create this, especially since we have no blueprints or you know no scans or nothing, right? So we have something that works like so. And then what I can do is grab these bottom edges and just kind of taper those out uh, just a bit, taper the tops in just a bit. So you get something like so, right? And you can see how it gets in pretty close. The steering wheel is kind of in the way on this shot. But, you know, we can fill those holes later. You can see it kind of goes in uh, along the bottom. But, yeah, that's that's how I'd create that. And then for this bottom piece, right, we don't want to see through the vehicle. And what I can do now is just bring these edges 
up like so. And there we go. So, and from here, I can select these edges uh, on the ends and just bring these in, scale them. You know, I'm just doing all of this so I have a nice block out. And if I hide, hide these doors real quick, we can start to see kind of, I gotta move these back just a bit. So I can move these back in the Z. And, you know, we're not worried about neatness and everything. We're just making sure no holes are apparent and whatnot. So there we go. I'm gonna group all of this now because kind of got a little bit messy. So I group this. This is what we got. And I got that one poly surface still hiding. Now what I can do is for this door, right now I wanna verify that everything is good to go. So if I select these doors, control one, isolate, hold shift, right click and do a separate, right? Now I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't need this PRF anymore. So I can hold control shift A and there. Now I can move the doors. Now what we're gonna do is set up the locators and set up the doors to open, okay? So you can just go to create locator and roughly put these in position. When it comes to doors, you don't wanna put the door locator uh, inside the door, the hinge is actually on, or I would say more closer to the sheet metal here, because the hint, you'll know, just go open your car door or go take a look at a car door, you'll see what I mean. But there's these hinges, I would say, if I can find an example here, these, this is a, a latch. So uh, there's really no good example that I found in here. But the pivot is going to be kind of uh, more towards the sheet metal, and it's going to rotate out. So knowing that I can kind of put this closer to the sheet metal door and we get something like this. This is just very, very simple, very, very proxy. And what I can do now is grab this group and put it inside. And, oh, I did the whole group. I didn't want to do that. Instead, I want to just literally grab the door. So I'll shift P unparent that, put that in that locator. And then if I open the door, you know, this should give me what I need without it, you know, hitting or uh, intersecting too much. You know, if it is, you know, you can play around with that, you know, unparent and move the locator a little bit more forward, which is what's causing that small clipping. And uh, yeah, you get something like this. And this is good for now. OK, so there we go. I, there's a couple of holes here but that's no problem and I can kind of re-symmetry. So now what I'm going to do is kind of jump back to the final version so we can take a look at that. Okay, so here we are back to kind of the final version. And like I said, if I head back to the general workspace and scrub the time slider, I just set some simple animations and I also did the rear hatch as well. So you can kind of see how these open and you can see how I have everything kind of set up. I have the door sill and a little bit more cleaned up than what I had in the demo, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, you know, there's still, a, you know, this is still pretty dirty, which is fine for, again, what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna clean this all up later, right? And I can grab the rear piece and you can kind of see how things are looking. There's still some things that I need to, you know, duplicate and give some thickness like around these window frames and stuff like that. But this is how you start the process. Now that I've done this, I know the proper position and scale of the steering wheel. I know the positions of these dials and the speedometer tachometer. I know the positions of the center dials. I know the position of the center stack. I have a good idea of where the seats should sit, you know. I know where, you know, the rear suspension struts and everything should sit. I have the wheel well, the spare tire. Everything is set up, right? Everything is set up properly based off of our reference, right? So you can see we have our mood board and reference and we have kind of everything set up. And this is going to allow us now, when we start jumping into creating detailed seats, detailed steering wheels and detailed instrument panels, center console, shifter boots, you know, hand brakes, all the rears, it's going to be so, so much easier now that we've done this. OK, I'm telling you, this is really, really helpful to get you going and set up 
and we know that everything is good to go you know a little bit of cleanup but it's so much easier to start it this way than to just get in and randomly start modeling and i recommend this workflow for anything that you do is to always work with a, a block out and then from there you refine and add details and everything's good to go again it's to scale too so we know any character can drop in here and he's uh, he or she is good to go. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. I'm excited to keep this moving. And, you know, I'm going to record the process as I go. So, you know, I'll, I'll be doing this uh, over the next uh, few weeks and the next few months. So you, you'll get updates as I'm doing it. All right. So with that, let me know if you have any questions or uh, anything you'd like to see next. Be sure to check out the channel. You know, I just posted this last How to Model Anything video, which uh, was pretty well received. And I got a lot of other stuff out there. So be sure to check that out. Like, comment, subscribe, all that to help support the channel. So thank you all, all of you for support. And I will see you around.